We got a cheap dual bay SSD enclosure for your Mac. Can you raid this thing and get more speed? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one today. I get asked this question all the time about this enclosure sitting in my hand right here. And today we got a super shocking result. So stay tuned for that result. Okay, so about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I did a video on the exact enclosure I'm talking about here. And uh, it's not available right now, but take a look at my screen. This is what it was. So it was called the Yoda Master Dual Bay NVMe Enclosure. That's the key here. PCIe NVMe N.2 drives, M.2 drives. You can see it was around 50 bucks with a coupon. Now it's not available, but don't worry about that because what I'm gonna show you is, is you know, it's more of the process, but still, if you wanna get a dual bay enclosure, there's some available. Here's one, I don't even know how to say this, but here's one for $29.99 with the $4 coupon. So like 25 bucks right here. Again, the key here is gonna be M.2 NVMe and then look for PCIe because that's the 10 gigabit per second speed there. There's another one over here by I think Oracle that makes it dual bay NVMe. Me. You can see in here PCIe 3820. Now, don't get something like this. This is the wrong one. This one's actually going to be, looks like it's the right one. It looks very similar to the one I have, but this is going to be a SATA enclosure. So you're only going to get like, you know, a lot slower speeds with that. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that. That's kind of important to understand in case you want to do this test later, but let's keep moving. The reason these enclosures are kind of interesting here, if you look at this, I have two different cables coming out of them, and I'll show you some close-ups. But what this basically is, is it's just really two separate NVMe enclosures built into one chassis, all right? There's actually two cables coming out. You can see that. These usually only come with one cable. I actually, you know, found my, my the second cable from just another NVMe thing I had over here. So you have to, you know, I supplied one of the cables, but now I have you know, two different SSDs coming into this thing or they're in here and then I have two cables coming out. Now the, the actual SSDs that I'm using for this test, I have two of these right here. These are gonna be the 990 EVO plus one terabyte each. I'll show you some close-ups of that as well. So you can see that. So I have both of those drives in here and we're gonna do some tests on this and see you know, what kind of RAID can we achieve with this. Okay, and I'm also not saying this is the best thing to do. It's not, it's just kind of a fun experiment. But what I wanna do in this experiment is I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to my M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting back there. And I'm gonna rate it in both rate zero and see if I can get faster speeds with it. First, I'm gonna do a baseline. And then I'm actually gonna do it in RAID 1 just to see if I can get some redundancy out of it as well. And then we're finally gonna talk about JBot as well. And I'm also gonna show you how to do this via you know, Mac OS. It's all built into Mac OS. It's super easy, it just takes a few minutes. So let's kind of get into this a little bit more, but I just wanted to kind of explain the video. It's actually pretty shocking results too. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is just do a baseline test to see how fast this is by itself. So I'm gonna plug both of those cables into the front of the M4 Pro Mac Mini over there, the very front. That's the 10 gigabit per second ports on the front of the Mac Mini. And we're gonna go ahead and run some Blackmagic speed tests. So take a look at this. Here's the first, you know, I'm just gonna do each one. So here's the first side of it, the side of this enclosure. And you can see it's almost, you know, close to a thousand megabytes per second. And then obviously on the second one, we're gonna get very, very similar results here, if you can see that. So overall, that's exactly what I, you know, expected around. Let me just see the averages, 973, let's just average them for the writes, 870 megabytes per second for the, for the reads. So, and of course that's expected because of the exact same drives and the exact same enclosure more or less going into the exact same Mac mini ports. So there's our baseline. Now let's use, now what we're gonna do is do something with RAID zero to see if we can speed this up and using Mac OS RAID. It's really kind of shocking, but you gotta watch the whole video, trust me. You know, just watch the whole thing, it's gonna make more sense. Okay, so now we're gonna combine those two drives into RAID 0, it's super easy on a Mac. Let me just show you how to do it. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna open up Launchpad, look for the other folder, click on the other folder right here, and then get Disk Utility right here, click on that. So the main thing here is, if you'll notice over here, I actually pre-formatted both of these disks. Again, they're showing up separately. These are, these are both formatted as APFS. Make sure that you, you know, just my one disclaimer here is, this is your main drive up here. You'll see where it says externals here. Make sure you're working with these drives only when you format them and also when we, we show you how to do RAID here because you don't want to delete your main drive. That's my disclaimer. Know what you're doing here. So here are the two drives that I have hooked up to that dual bay enclosure. So we're going to RAID this really easily. First thing, just select one of them here. We can see each of these is one terabyte by itself. This is going to be a one terabyte. That's a one terabyte. So I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to go up here to the top. Up here it says Disk Utility now because I'm on Disk Utility. Click on File, then RAID Assistant. This is super easy. So this comes up right here. We're gonna go RAID 0 first. It says splits the data evenly across two or more disks without parity or information. The speed is the intended goal here. So we're gonna to try to increase the speed. 
Um, I don't expect much because we're only in a 10 gigabit per second connection. We're gonna click next. So now this is the important part. Only select the drives that you wanna go ahead and, you know, don't select your main Apple drive. I don't think it's even possible, but just don't. Select these two drives that we have hooked up that we just hooked up there. We're gonna click next. These are the one terabyte drives, the external drives. Now here, what I'm gonna do is just call this, I'll call this RAID zero and then Samsung, just so we know what's going on here. I'm gonna change this format to APFS, just like that, so make sure it's there. RAID zero, the capacity will be two terabytes. There one, so it's gonna make a one two terabyte drive because there's two one terabytes. The chunk size I like to make 128. I like to make it as big as possible. You guys can read up on that. I mean, there's a lot of different people that like different things, that's what I use. So it says for best performance, choose a chunk size that matches the size of the data you're accessing. So, I mean, let's just go and make it 256 for, for just this, this record in here. And uh, so there we go. We're gonna click next here. I guess that's that's good for this test at least. We're gonna go ahead and click next here. So now it's gonna say, ready to create this, is giving you one last chance. Just make sure you have the right drive selected and then create. Now watch what happens over here. Instantly it removed one of them and it's doing a whole bunch of stuff over here. Now if you look over here, it's obviously, now they're both gone. It's saying it's creating the RAID set over here. It's gonna take a couple seconds here, you know, obviously depending on your computer speed and stuff like that, it says mounting disk and it should come up here fairly soon. And we're gonna see, hopefully it's gonna be over here, um, you know, showing up as a RAID configuration in just about a couple seconds. And there, it looks like right there, RAID created successfully. You can see it right here. I'm gonna click done. And uh, now look at down here, RAID zero, and it says right here, API is two terabytes. So if we go over here, I'm just gonna minimize this. If we go over here, look at it, this is over here. Here's the drive right here. Now if we right click on it and we click get info, it's gonna be, look over here, two terabytes, so we have two terabytes. Let's run a speed test on this, see if we get any more speed with this. All right, so let's run this exact same black magic speed test, and we're gonna go ahead and run this, and you can see we are getting a little bit more speed, not much at all. We can see a 1,003 right there, and then over here we're getting you know, a couple more here as well, just just a touch, right? So the speed's gone up just slightly. I mean, I think it's gone up like 30 megabytes per second, maybe 35 megabytes per second, somewhere in that range. So you're not gonna be getting a ton with this, but you are getting like now a two terabyte drive. The issue with RAID zero though, is if any of these drives fail, if either of them fail, you lose all of the data, you lose everything. So I don't recommend this, but before we actually, you know, let me just try one last thing. So we had plugged into the, the two front ports on this, which are the 10 gigabit per second ports on the Mac mini. Let me just see if I can get any faster speeds by plugging into the two back ports. In my case, I have Thunderbolt 5 back there, so I'm just gonna plug into the Thunderbolt 5. It shouldn't make a difference, but sometimes it does. Let me just see if that makes a difference. Now that we moved the cables back to the Thunderbolt 5 ports in the back, let's just see if we get any speed increase here. I don't think we will, but maybe. Sometimes you're shocked. Let's go ahead and try this. Look what it's saying here. Now this is this can't be right, all right? So I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like it's actually, you know, from, from actually Black Magic, it looks like it's a lot faster. This really can't be true. I'm gonna have to test this further because obviously this is a 10 gig connection. I'm not sure if it's using both of them, but you can see here with the Thunderbolt connection on the back, it's actually giving us a lot more speed supposedly here in this uh, obviously black magic test. So you guys post in the comments what's going on here. Pretty crazy, right? Okay, so next what I wanna do is I wanna move 50 gigabytes of basically files into this drive. Let's just see kind of what the throughput is. Let's just kind of do the math on it and see if we're really getting those speeds or not. So here's 50 gigabytes of files right here. I'm gonna move it in over here and then click this button and then we're gonna record it. So here we go, one, two, three. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna click record here. I was a little bit behind, but let's just go ahead and we'll see how close this is. I clicked the button maybe a little bit late, but we can kind of equate for that later. So here we go. So we're moving 50 gigabytes of data. Remind, just remember, those are just basically, that's a 10 gigabit per second enclosure. So what we get here, I'm not sure. I'm kind of confused by what's going on here. So we did do RAID zero, you can see it in there. Obviously let it go here, and then we're gonna stop it right about there. So 23.6 seconds, what does that equate to? Okay, we did the math here. This is just kind of a quick estimate. It looks like it was transfer that data and it was 2,118 megabytes per second in RAID zero. So it's basically doubling the speed of the actual SSDs there. It's pretty incredible. I mean, not the SSDs, but the enclosure. I just proved it to you. I mean, there's other things going on here. I don't think this is gonna last past maybe the cache is going on or something, something weird's going on here. But look at that. It went from a, a 10, 10 gigabit per second enclosure that's usually only up to about 1,000 megabytes per second, and now we're getting 2,000 megabytes per second by going into RAID zero here, which is crazy on this, right? Is that crazy or not? Anyways, let's go now. Let's try RAID one now and just see what that does, and then we'll kind of wrap this up. 
All right, that was RAID 0, it was kind of a shock to me. Let's go now to RAID 1. This is maybe a little bit more useful. So you can see my, I made the drives back to normal. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. I'm gonna go back to Launchpad here, go to Other, go to Disk Utility, and let me just show you a screenshot. There's a way you can unraid these, I'll show you really quickly right there, and then you do that, and then you have to reformat them both again as separate drives. I did that again, so these are separate drives again. That RAID 0 is gone. So long story short is now I'm gonna do RAID, RAID um, 1, I'm sorry, RAID 1, not RAID 0, but RAID 1. So here we go, so same thing. You, you click the first thing here, first drive here, and you go up to Disk Utility, go to File, then RAID Assistant. Now we can do Mirror, this is gonna be RAID 1. So there's two other ones you can do here. I'm not gonna do the third one. But the second one's what I'm gonna do right now. This is RAID 1, so when you do this one, you lose the space of one of the drives. So if we have two one terabyte drives, we're only gonna get one terabyte. We're gonna mirror them, but if one fails, you, you still get all of your data. So you get the, you basically get redundancy. If one drive fails, you'll still have all of your data, albeit at a smaller, a little bit less speed here. This one over here, if you have drives of different sizes, this is actually pretty cool. You're gonna lose some speed, but it can, it basically it adds the drives. Let's say there's a 500 gigabyte and a one terabyte. It's gonna make one drive called just a bunch of disks. That's 1.5 terabytes. So you can use different disks of different sizes. But we're gonna do mirrored right here, which is RAID 1. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Again, inside of here, you wanna pick the drives that we want in here. These are these are my drives are here. Make sure you're picking the right drives. These drives are the two drives over here. We're gonna click next. Same thing over here, we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go RAID 1, and then we're gonna go Samsung, just like that. And uh, let me just see in here, so we got RAID 1. Again, I'm gonna make this chunk size 256 in here. You can see it, so we're gonna leave all this alone. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, we're gonna change this to APFS. <laughs> sorry about that, we wanna do that as well. I'm gonna click next here, and then it's gonna say create it, and we're gonna go ahead and create it. You can see it's working here. I don't know, sometimes it takes longer. You can see, obviously, it, it removed it from over here again, and uh, it's saying it's doing all the stuff, creating a RAID set. This is where it kind of hangs a little while sometimes, and then it'll actually create it over here. And look at it, it's over here now, RAID created successfully, and there we go. So now if you look in here, it says down here, RAID. it's right here, RAID sets. RAID 1 Samsung, this is the drive we just created. You can see it's we have two terabyte, two one terabyte drives, but it's only giving us one terabyte. Again, that's because in RAID 1, if one of my drives fails in that enclosure, basically all the drive, you know, you're not gonna lose any data. You basically can pull the bad drive and uh, all the data will be on that, that good drive. It'll be a little bit slower and then you can copy it off of that if you want, but you'll save all your data this way. And this is where it's really important in RAID 1. So RAID 1's really cool because it gives you the redundancy Okay, so what do you think about the video? So pretty interesting, right? Now, I thought Blackmagic was actually making a mistake or something, but you can see by moving the cables from the 10 gigabit per second ports on the front to the back over there to the Thunderbolt 5, we basically theoretically double the speed of these drives here. Obviously, you know, in RAID 0, you're gonna get almost double the speed, around 2,000 megabytes per second, and we proved it with the data test. Now, that's the thing, like Blackmagic can be wrong sometimes, but when you move 50 gigabytes and you actually time it, it actually moved that data, so we know that actually result is pretty true. It was just weird to me because obviously these cables are only 10 gigabit per second, the enclosure is, and we went into the front 10 gigabit per second. You would think theoretically maybe it could get faster speeds there. We only saw a little bit of an increase there. We had to go back to those Thunderbolt 5. Now I didn't try it on Thunderbolt 4. I'm guessing you'd get, you know, maybe not as fast, but still it's pretty cool to know what you're doing. Okay, now is this something you actually should really do? Buy one of these things and do what I just did here? Probably not, right? Because you can get a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure or something with just one drive or maybe even sometimes two drives. That's gonna be better than this setup. This is not really what it was intended for, but it's just kind of a cool test, all right? Because you can take basically multiple NVMe, you know, it doesn't have to be this enclosure that I showed you. You could have two theoretically completely different NVMe enclosures with different cords coming in, completely separated, and you could do the same thing with it. Plug them both in, create a RAID environment with them, and actually have that RAID. So that's really, you know, it's interesting, right? But it's probably not something you should do. But the RAID 1 is the actual thing I think people should do instead of RAID 0, because RAID 1 actually mirrors that hard drive. So by doing RAID 1, you can basically take two drives like I did here, and uh, obviously the problem with this whole setup is you're using two ports, right? I mean, on your Mac Mini, which is terrible. But with RAID 0, you'd always want to leave that in. But with RAID, you know, this other setup, RAID 1, maybe you just plug it in when you want to do backups or you want to move some stuff off for data, you know, you want to move some data around. And you only plug in those two cables at that exact time. So anytime you move over everything to that RAID environment, if one of the drives fails at that point, all your information will be in the other drive in RAID 1. In RAID 0, that's not the case. You lose everything in RAID 0. But in RAID 1, you know, everything's kind of backed up and you have a redundancy built in. So I think RAID 1 is where this is all at. So if you buy one of these enclosures and do it in RAID 1, you actually have two different drives backing each other up and you can just plug these two cables in whenever you want to use it and you're not taking up all your ports at the same time. 
I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments what you think. I thought it was kind of an interesting video of what you can do with these cheap things, especially showing the speed. But again, RAID 0 is a lot more risky because now you're risking any of those two drives failing, you're, you lose everything. But with RAID 1, it's super redundant. And uh, you get the idea, right? So we're going to wrap this up. Tell me if you guys learned something from the video. And uh, subscribe if you can. We will talk to you in the next one. Peace.